So the other type of problem that we will look at when we're looking at projectile motion is something that I just call a cannon problem. That's basically where something is leaving from the ground or it can be leaving from an elevated surface. So we could have something here, but it's initially being launched upwards at some angle, or it could even be launched downwards at some angle. It really doesn't matter, but my launching is not horizontal, but it's starting with both a vertical and a horizontal component. So what that means is we would have a vertical velocity as well as we would have a horizontal velocity those would be my components of my total velocity. So if we were given an angle here, we could determine uh, what the x initial velocity is and what the y initial velocity is. Okay. Same as the other problems that deal with projectile motion is we're going to deal with horizontal and vertical separately. However, the one thing that we can take back and forth is time. This is gonna look a little different in the fact that when we're looking at projectile motion, Sometimes, when it looks like this, we, if we essentially just stop it there, this second part is a cliff problem. We're at the very top of my motion, my velocity in the y direction is zero. So we can sometimes cut these problems into half, but, and that's why over here I have velocity at the halfway point, as well as the final velocity, as well as time halfway and total time. Because oftentimes we're dealing with, well, what's the maximum altitude or what happens when we're reaching the very top? And that time would be half the time, uh, as long as something is returning to the same level at which it starts, that's gonna be half the time that it's in the air. So with this question, let's make it simple. Let's say we're shooting off at 50 meters per second. We're gonna give our Y velocity initial 40 meters per second, and because that's gonna make a nice three, four, five, we'll say our initial velocity on the X is 30 meters per second, okay? Now in this circumstance, we'll have it land at the same height. So with my Y motion, here's what I know. I know that my final velocity is negative 40. I know my acceleration is negative 10. My displacement, total displacement would be zero from start to finish. And I also know my final velocity halfway through. That's here, where my object is no longer reaching or moving upwards. It has reached a velocity of zero at the very top, and then it's going to start moving back downwards. Okay. Now, why do I point that out? Well, because that's going to be an easy way for us to solve for time one half. Or time full, we could use any of that idea. Okay. If we want to figure out how far this goes or how long it's in the air, right? that information is gonna be useful for us, right? Uh, let's say we wanted to do time one half, right? We could use the idea that the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So that is 50, oh, excuse me. That's my total, so I'm just dealing with the line motion, so that is 40 plus negative 10 times time. My final velocity is zero. So my time, one half, would be four seconds. So it's in the air for four seconds until it reaches maximum height. What I know then that my total time would then be eight seconds. And I can prove that using our equation of change in y equals velocity times time plus one half at squared. Right? So my change in y should be zero. This would be 40 times eight plus one half negative 10 times eight squared. This is 320 plus five times 46, no, 64, excuse me, 64. 64 times five is 320 minus. So that proves that the total displacement, whoops, that my total displacement is zero. Okay. Um, once I know either of those times, it's pretty straightforward that I can know well, how far is it here? How far is it here? If that's four seconds and that's eight seconds, right? Half of my displacement would be 120 meters. This would be 240 meters right there. And we can work through the problem there. Right, so we're simply using our equations that we learned in one-dimensional kinematics. 
we're applying them here, uh, understanding that our x motion has to be at a constant velocity because there is no acceleration in the x direction, and my y motion is going to be accelerated. Understanding at a projectile, the top of my y velocity is going to be zero, my time up is equal to my time down, and the thing that I can take back and forth is my time. Again, this is just an example of one type of problem, right? Not all problems are going to be exactly like this. We have to solve values based upon figuring out which variables were given, what's the initial setup of the problem, and how I could apply that. The main steps we have to make sure that we're doing is one, breaking our initial velocity into its x and y components. Once we do that, we can then figure out what each x values and my y values would be, and then understanding which equations I would plug in to be able to find something that I can then use, right? Again, the big idea is if I can find a time, that's gonna be my value that I can use from one uh, component to the other. And so that's really the, the gatekeeper of being able to solve part of the problem if we just don't have enough information.